Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. And it doesn't matter what you have been. And it doesn't matter what I have been. And it doesn't matter what those of you watching by TV have been. Your history is not your destiny. We have an opportunity for a new beginning. I think when the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, I think that means that we become new spiritual clay. You know, if somebody is bald, they don't grow new hair because they were born again. I mean, if somebody's 30 pounds overweight, they don't wake up skinny because they were born again. But we're made new inside. We have a brand new opportunity. And then if we let what's in us help us, it can help us with all those other outside things. You know, the Bible says that all things are possible with God. What is impossible with man is possible with God. But I want you to listen to what I'm getting ready to say. It doesn't say that all things are positively going to happen with God. And I think sometimes we think because there's a promise in the Word that no matter what we do, we should just, well, I, I believe that, I should have that. Well, you know, true believing provokes obedience. And so when God says, whosoever will can have the promises, that all of these good things are for whosoever will, it doesn't just mean whosoever has some kind of a mental assent. Well, yeah, I believe God wants me to have a good life, so therefore I should have a good life. No, it means I believe God wants me to have a good life, and he's going to show me how to get there. And I'm going to take steps of faith. Now, listen to me, and don't get discouraged when I say this. And it's going to take time. And it's probably going to take more time than I thought it was going to take. And it may be harder than I thought it would be. And it may cost me a few things in my life. But I am determined that I am going to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. And if he died for me to enjoy my life, then I am not going to go around with my head hanging down, being miserable all the time, because every little thing in my life is not exactly the way that I would like it to be. Amen. And you know, here's the thing. You can, you can come to a meeting like this, or you can go to your church, and you got great music, and good preaching, and we all get excited with the Word of God, but the truth is, is you have to go home. <laughs> I just think I should tell you that, that I'm not going to stay here, and you're not either. <laughs> but if you can make it through Saturday night and Sunday, I'll be back to give you a word on Monday morning, see, on the TV. But the truth is, is, you know, we, we don't just float around on the glory cloud singing the hallelujah chorus because we're saved. I mean, we've got real lives with real hurt and real pain and real needs and some real ugly people sometimes that are not very pleasant to deal with. But Paul said, I am determined to know him and the power of his resurrection that lifts me out from among the dead, even while I'm still in this body. Now, Paul was talking about a resurrection power where you can have an absolutely, really enjoyable life, even though everything in your life maybe is not going exactly the way that you would like it to go. We have to learn how to work with the Holy Spirit. God's got a good plan for us. We have an opportunity for a new beginning. We become new spiritual clay for the Holy Spirit to work with. But we must learn how to yield. That's a beautiful word. Yield. I'm really starting to like that word a lot. We have to learn how to yield. <laughs> Instead of being resistant. <laughs> we have to learn how to surrender <laughs> instead of being stubborn <laughs> come on 
Let's look at a scripture in Romans chapter 6, verse 13. You're never going to get to where God wants you to be if you won't learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And you say, well, I want God to speak to me, but I just don't hear from God. Well, you know what? I think you hear more than you think you do. I think that we think sometimes that this hearing from God is this super spooky, voicey thing that you're waiting for. And really, the, the biggest way that God leads his people is just through knowing. There's like a, you, you just know. You just, you just know, I should do this, I shouldn't do this. Or man, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, I, I probably should go back and apologize, but no, I don't want to. They do things to me too. <laughs> so, so often, seriously, so often God leads us and he shows us something, but we don't want to. It, it's, not, it's not what we want to do. And uh, we must learn how to yield because God is not trying to take us anywhere that won't work out good for us. Do you understand that? And even if there's something that God asks you to give up that's a little hard for you, he's not trying to take your toys away from you. You know, he's not a bad dad who's trying to take your toys away from you. It, it's because it's something that needs to go in your life for your well-being. There's something better that God has in mind for you, and he's just trying to help you see that, but you will never see it if you hang on to the bad stuff. Amen? Some of you, just the friends that you have are just about to kill you. I mean, honestly. And you know why you don't get away from them? Because you don't want to be lonely. You don't want to not be invited. You don't want to not have something to do on Friday night. And so you just keep being miserable. Well, I want to tell you something. I was lonely for a long time while I was trying to obey God to do what I'm doing. When I started doing what I'm doing, it was not very popular for women to preach. And I lost my friends. I got asked to leave my church. It was, it was tough stuff. But I, couldn't, I could not be miserable anymore. I had decided I cannot be miserable anymore. I cannot be. I have to find out about this God thing. I have to find out if there isn't more than just going and sitting on a pew on Sunday morning and then going home and fighting with my husband all week, then going back the next week. There's got to be more, and I've got to find out what it is. And there is more for you, and 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 for every one of you. There's more for every one of you if you will just start really following the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But I know I shouldn't say that, but. I know I shouldn't eat that, but. Well, I know I probably shouldn't watch this on TV, but. Well, you're basically saying, I know what God wants, but I'm just going to do what I feel like. Well, then just don't plan on having what Jesus died for you to have. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I didn't say, I mean, you can live like that, probably go to heaven. If you really believe in God, you really believe Jesus died for your sins. But, you know, even that, it has to provoke some level of obedience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just think that, that we've got a lot of sloppy religion these days. Just a lot of just like, well, I go to church. Well, how do you live the rest of the week? You know, what? What do you do the rest of the week? Can, can anybody where you work, can they tell there's a difference in you and the rest of the people? Or are you afraid to be talked about and judged and, and criticized? You afraid you won't have anybody to eat lunch with? You know? See, we got, we got to stand up and stand out. And I'm not talking being weird and being some kind of, you know, person that everybody thinks is loony tunes. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about starting to make decisions that you know are going to produce the good fruit in your life. And honestly, 
you, if, if you did get away from some of the people that you're involved with, you might go through a time of loneliness. I'm going to tell you won't. You might. You probably will. But I'll tell you this. It would be probably really good for you because if you don't have anybody else, you do get to know Jesus. You and him can get real snugly close when that's all you got. So. Romans 6, 13 says this, and I love it. Do not continue offering or yielding, there's our word again, your bodily members and faculties to sin as instruments and tools of wickedness, but offer and yield yourselves to God as though you've been raised from the dead to perpetual life and your bodily members and faculties to God, presenting them as implements of righteousness. Now, I love that. Do you know, how many of you know what it's like to be tempted to sin? Okay, so how many of you know that what it's like to resist it? And then how many of you know what it's like to just, well, you just yield to it. You, just, you, know. <laughs> you know, you can save a million arguments in your home just by not having to have the last word. Come on, this is good preaching. Well, I can't let him think he's right. I'm fed up with him thinking he's right all the time. He's not right all the time. Honey, let me tell you something. Men are always right. Now, just... I mean, they just... That comes with the package. It's got something to do with ego. They just think they're right about everything. But ladies, we know different. It's just between us, though. We'll keep letting them think they're right. My, my, my. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. And this is the agreement, the testament, the covenant that I will set up and conclude with them after those days, says the Lord. I will imprint my laws upon their heart, and I will inscribe them upon their minds and on their inmost thoughts and understanding. He then goes on to say, and their sins and their law breakings, I will remember no more. I will remember no more. Now watch this. Because this is, I think what I'm going to share here in the next few minutes is important. Now where there is absolute remission, Forgiveness and cancellation of the penalty of these sins and law breakings. There is no longer any offering made to atone for sin. So now here's what we need to get out of this and be able to apply it to our practical life. When Jesus paid the price for our sins, it was such a precious and a complete gift that there's never any more offering that needs to be made for sin. We don't have to, so let me just give you some examples. Like, when I do something wrong, and I ask God to forgive me, and I receive that forgiveness, then I don't need to feel guilty. <laughs> and that's the hardest thing for us to get through our heads, because we think we should at least beat on ourselves for a few days and think how wretched we are. I mean, it, it's really challenging to just receive God's forgiveness and then just go on. But Jesus said, that, I mean, the Bible says there's no longer any penalty that you can pay. And here's what I've learned. I learned this from my life, and maybe some of you will resonate with this. I think that when we have not done things right in the past, or, or maybe... Maybe you did some really terrible things in your past. You know, maybe you've had some really terrible things done to you in your past. But there's no, you, you no longer, if you've received Christ, you no longer have to be penalized for that or try to keep paying for that. And what I did for a lot of years was, even though I believed in the forgiveness of God, I just felt bad about myself all the time. I took my sack of guilt everywhere that I went. And I say this, and it sounds funny, but it's true. I didn't feel right if I didn't feel wrong. I mean, I got so accustomed to feeling wrong and to feeling guilty about something that when I really started understanding 
that I didn't have to pay for my mistakes, it just felt wrong. It's like, it, it, it's wrong to just feel this good. And then it took me a while to really get it that it was okay to feel that good. And I, another thing I had a real hard time with was I had a hard time enjoying my life. I was good at work. I mean, I could work. You give me a project and I'm going to work because I felt good about myself when I worked and produced something. I got my significance out of what I did. And God does not want us to get our worth and value out of what we do. He wants us to get our worth and value out of who we are in Him. And when we can do that, then it really doesn't matter what we do. We don't have to have a high position. We can be happy just doing whatever God puts in front of us to do. And if He puts you on the platform, yay. But if He puts you washing the toilet, yay. Everybody wants to be up here. Well, you don't really, not if God hasn't called you to be here. This one hour of fame and glory is nothing for all the rest of it that goes along with it. And just be happy being whatever God wants you to be. You don't have to give up your joy to pay for your past mistakes. You don't have to feel guilty all the time to pay for your past mistakes. You don't have to spend your whole life doing nothing but working, 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 trying to pay for your past mistakes. It's okay to enjoy your life. <laughs> Amen? And it's okay to enjoy yourself. Well, you know, Mary Magdala was a woman with a past. Wow. And just so you know, Magdala was not her last name. It was the town she was from. It would be like calling me Joyce Fenton. <laughs> that was just kind of what they did back then. There was another Mary that traveled with Jesus that was from Bethany. So they would say Mary of Bethany. Well, this was Mary Magdala. And, you know, God doesn't always choose popular people from popular places. Jesus of Nazareth. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Why didn't God stick him in a more respectable town? Why didn't he choose more respectable disciples? Why didn't he choose a more respectable woman to anoint Jesus with the sweet perfume? You know that Mary, in all probability, was a prostitute in her past life. The perfume that she used to anoint Jesus, possibly, I don't have scripture verse for this, just think with me, possibly could have been purchased with money that she got from her profession as a prostitute. But you know, it was what she had. And it was worth a year's wages. And Jesus had done so much for her in forgiving her. Seven demons were cast out of Mary. The Bible says she was an especially wicked sinner. And yet, get this, she was on the travel team. <laughs> Whoa, she was on the travel team. Now, you know, I'm picky about who travels with me, especially in close quarters because you've got them in your face all the time. And here, this especially wicked sinner <laughs> was on the travel team. Traveled around with him all the time. You know, see, when you're forgiven, you're forgiven. <laughs> you're a new creature in Christ. All things pass away. And in Christ, we have total equality. Can you understand that? In Christ, there's no more male nor female, Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. We are all one in Christ. We're nothing without Him, and everything we are is because of Him. I only do what I do because God has gifted me to do it. I couldn't do it if I didn't have the gift to do it. You couldn't do what you do if you didn't have the gift to do it. And listen to what I'm going to say. Please understand this. 
nothing that God gives us to do is insignificant. Did you hear me? The devil always wants to make us feel little. Little. When David's brothers came to him, when he went out to the battlefield and they didn't really want him there because they knew he had been anointed to be king and they were jealous of that. They said, well, with whom have you left those few sheep? They wanted to belittle him. They wanted to make him feel little. And, you know, we don't have time to go to all these places, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says that God purposely chooses. No, we are going to go there. 1 Corinthians 1, 26. For simply consider your own call, brethren. Not many of you were considered to be wise according to human estimates and standards. Not many of you were influential and powerful. Not many of you were of high and noble birth. No, for God, not, please get this, for God selected, deliberately chose what in the world is foolish to put the wise to shame and what the world calls weak to put the strong to shame. And God also selected, deliberately chose <laughs> what in the world is lowborn and insignificant and branded and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing that he might depose and bring to nothing the things that are so that no mortal man should have pretense for glorying in the presence of God. God uses what the world would throw away as trash. Did you hear me? Don't ever belittle yourself. Even if other people do it, don't you buy into it and agree with them. You say, no, I am a child of God. I am forgiven. I am a new creature. And I don't care what I've done in the past. I have got a good future in front of me. And I am not going to miss it. You know, I say this all the time. Please get this. I had a lousy start in life. I mean, a really sad, painful beginning. But I'm having a good finish. Amen? And that same thing is available to every one of you. Not a positively, but a possibility. If you'll learn the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit guide your life. You know, we've been trying to convey to people when we do give people an opportunity to receive Christ in our meetings. And I just shared with Michael a while back, I said, you know, I'm just concerned that a lot of people think they just can kind of get Jesus and tack him onto their messes and he's going to fix them all up and they can just go on and live however they want to live because we see too much of that. And let me tell you, when you're truly born again, there should be a change. And I mean a pretty radical change. I don't mean perfection, but there should be a change. And we should be changing all the time and, and growing and becoming more Christ-like. And I think sometimes the thing that we miss is that, yes, you can receive Christ. That's all you need to be have your sins forgiven, believe that Jesus died for your sins. But in order to have the life he wants you to live, you need to be willing to yield and surrender to him. You need to be willing to also, like Mike says, give him the keys to your life. I don't care how smart you think you are, you are not smart enough to run your own life. You know, it's so important for all of you to realize that we all make mistakes, we all have weaknesses, but God is a God of redemption, and He's always there to lift us out of any pit that we have gotten into. And if you've been stuck in the past, I want you to realize that your history doesn't have to be your destiny. You can begin again. Whether it's a relationship issue, a financial issue, a sin issue, uh, a health issue, you can begin again.
But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. We doen humanitarian works all over the world. You know, here we are in Haiti. I'm here in Thailand. Thessaloniki, Greece. In the back bush of Africa. On the Mekong River. In the city of Phnom Penh. Human trafficking, today's term for modern slavery. We've been working in different parts of the world and providing a, a place for women to come out of that lifestyle and be restored. It, it, there's no limit here. This is, this is ran by God. He changes lives in Project Hope. You can change, you can get healing, you can survive. This little girl at 10 years old escaped on her own from sex trafficking. She lives on the streets. She was rounded up by vans that travel around and steal these children. They were actually weighing the little girls so that they could ship them out of the country. And she was able to sneak away and escape. She ran to the tent that you see behind me where we feed the children and ask for safety. So we're able to feed Ferrisua here every day. We're able to grant her just a little bit of safety and to help her in any way that we can, to tell her about Christ and just to love on her a whole bunch because she's an awesome little girl. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand.